Ja, du. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام 
ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام انما بعثت لاتمم مكارم الاخلاق one of the most beautiful descriptions of islam that we find in the quran is that it is an investment hal adullukum ala tijara allah tells us that our engagement with islam can be viewed as a form of investment but what makes the investment of allah different than any other investment is that for every dollar that you put for every action that you dedicate for everything that you contribute allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it not only for the action but even for the thought allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us man jaa bil hasanati falahu 10 amthalaha that whoever does a good deed they will be granted tenfold and this is further explained by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that man hamma bi hasanatin that even if you have the intention allah will reward you just think about how amazing that is that i see a billboard that says if you think about investing with us we will give you 10 times i don't even have to put in a single penny i just have to think about it and my bank balance begins to increase so the thought itself is the first seed and as i begin to do the action it continues to multiply so coming back to this verse man jaa bil hasanati falahu 10 amthalaha that after you thought about the action the the reward is put into your bank balance in the akhira and then you do the action but there's a condition that is often overlooked allah tells us man jaa bil hasanati and generally when we translate this as i did moments ago we say whoever does a good deed but the correct translation is whoever brings a good deed with them on the day of judgment and you may wonder what's the difference me doing a good deed versus bringing it with me on the day of judgment because allah says man jaa whoever brings a good deed the reason is very simple the moment i do something whether it's fasting whether it's charity whether it's reading quran whether it's an act of kindness shaitan will exert every effort possible and conceivable to make sure that that really hard earned good deed of mine goes to waste so i've given charity i need to post about it i'm being nice with my family but then all of a sudden i'm being bad all, again i'm praying my salah but then i completely lose out in that habit shaitan does his best to wipe out the good deeds that we do so allah reminds us don't only do something good make sure that you bring it with you on the day of judgment man jaa bil hasanati falahu 10 amthalaha you bring one good deed and you thought about it allah will multiply that investment tenfold so the biggest question we need to ask ourselves right now is with the month of ramadan which by definition is the most profitable investment just think about this for a moment i recite one verse of the quran not even a verse i recite one letter of the quran nabi sallallahu tells us we get the reward of 10 so i recited one letter i get the reward of 10 letters but then every action that i do is multiplied by 10 so then it goes to 100 but then in Ramadan everything that I do is multiplied by 70 and then the number just continues to increase and multiply and multiply so then we get complacent and we get happy with ourselves but Allah tells us mashallah you've done it it's great but make sure before you breathe your last breath you bring those good deeds with you and that's why scholars like Al Mu'alla ibn Fadl he would say that the ulama and the scholars and the people in the past 
when the Ramadan was approaching six months, they would make dua to Allah and say, Ya Allah, Ramadan is coming, allow us to benefit from it. And once Ramadan was concluded and completed, they began to weep and cry and ask Allah, Ya Allah, accept it from us. Taqabbal. Qabool. This is the most important thing that we can ask for. My teacher would always give this example. He would say, when you're driving your car, and in Texas, this is very relatable, and you have the AC on blast, it's freezing cold inside. The sweltering heat outside doesn't even come in. You go outside, you'll begin to melt. But inside your cool car, it's very comfortable. You have the AC on blast. But then you don't realize somebody in the back opens the window. Even just one small crack, a little bit. Just opens the window a little bit. In a few moments, the heat comes in, the cold goes out, and you can't feel it anymore. So no matter how many good deeds we have coming in through our AC vent, if we have just that window open even a little bit, it begins to dissipate and leave. And the warmth and the heat comes back inside. So during Ramadan, I'm up for Salatul Fajr. I'm fasting. I'm giving zakah. I'm controlling my tongue. I'm controlling my gaze. The moment Ramadan is done, it's as though it never happened. I'm back to watching the same things I'm watching, listening to the same things I'm listening to. My temper is the same as it was before. I'm still arguing. I'm fighting. Corruption, cheating, lying, stealing. This is just the name of the game. It's what I'm doing. And Ramadan was just a momentary break. And that's why it's so beautiful that on the day of Eid, instead of telling everyone happy Eid or even Eid Mubarak, which is a good thing to say, nothing wrong with it, what the Sahaba would say is, Allahu minna wa minkum. As we enjoy this joyous occasion, let's not forget. We need to make sure we're happy because our deeds were accepted. Our deeds were accepted. So, when the month of Ramadan comes to an end, there are two primary objectives that we all should have in mind. The first is protecting, safeguarding what has passed and moving forward as an improved version of ourselves. Two qualities, two things. We can put on our to-do list. Number one, making sure everything we've done in the month of Ramadan doesn't go to waste. And number two, as we move forward, we become a better version of ourselves. How do we ensure that what we have done does not go to waste? I've been speaking about this dua this entire week, but I'll repeat it for the benefit of those who didn't hear this explanation. And that is, when Ibrahim alayhi salam completed the building of the Kaaba. He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyu al-alim. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyu al-alim. O oh my Lord, O oh my Creator, O oh the one who knows me better than I know myself, I just built the Kaaba. I want you to think about that for a moment. Building the Kaaba, the one thing that attracts and draws Muslims from all walks of life. The Kaaba. He builds it with Ismail alayhi salam. And he says, Taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. The word taqabbal is a very powerful word in Arabic. Because like many other words, it has a dual meaning. In Arabic, taqabbal means Allah accept from me even though what I have done is not deserving of acceptance. In Arabic, you call this tasannu'. Tasannu' means takalluf. That what I have done, honestly, is not worthy of acceptance. But yeah, Allah overlooked the shortcomings. Can anyone truly in this masjid now say that my salah had 100% khushu'. My wudu was complete. My zakah and the source of income is 100%. I did not abuse anyone. I did not say anything wrong. My tongue is completely, perfectly fine. I have not hurt anyone's feelings. We can't. So we say to Allah, Ya Allah, I acknowledge that the goods that I'm going to bring with me on the Day of Judgment, they're defective. They're a replica. They're an imitation. They're not genuine and original. But Ya Allah, my only plea to you is, as I am acknowledging this, through your sheer mercy and kindness, 
overlook the defective goods and accept it. Taqabbal. Taqabbal. The second part, minna. Ya Allah, accept from us. When we make dua as a collective, there's more power to it and it's more likely to be accepted. If one person comes to you and says, I need help with X, Y, and Z thing, you will think to yourself, maybe, maybe not. Then he sends somebody else. And then he sends somebody else. And you begin to realize this person has connections. I'm going to go out of my way to help him. When we say, taqabbal minna, we're saying to Allah, Ya Allah, this entire ummah, we're weak. Khuliqal insanu da'ifa. Except from all of us, and very silently, I'm going to include therein my weak a'mal as well. Taqabbal minna. Innaka anta sami'ul alim. Ya Allah, you hear everything. And you know everything. You know that what I am doing is weak. I'll be the first to admit. Do I have 100% khushu' when I say Allahu Akbar? My mind is drifting everywhere. When I'm reading Quran, am I articulating the words as the Prophet wasallam read the Quran? When I'm giving my zakah, am I making sure it's 100% correct and my income is 100% pure and halal? Allah knows best. But being weak is completely normal. That's who we are. Allah does not expect us to be perfect, but we ask Allah through His perfection to accept our deeds as though they are perfect. There's a difference. No one is perfect. The anbiya were ma'asum. We human beings were not perfect. But our plea to Allah is taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Ya Allah, number one, you know that my Ramadan was filled with goodness, but there were shortcomings. But please accept from me and everyone else these defective goods through your soul and sheer kindness. So the first step that we all have to do is acknowledge weakness. One of the qualities that Allah loves in a human being is a confession, acknowledgement of humility. Allah loves humility. Man Allah. When we are humble before Allah, what is humility before Allah? Saying Allah, yes, I prayed. Yes, I gave hundreds of dollars in zakah. Yes, I fasted. Yes, I stayed up. Yes, I did i'tikaf. But never for a moment, for a split second, for the blink of an eye, do I think in myself that I have done something great because Allah, ultimately everything that I do is from your mercy and ability. You're the one who's letting me do this. When we have that quality of humility and acknowledgement of weakness, Allah will accept our deeds. It's like the dua of Dawood alayhi salam where he said, Ya Allah, I'm praising you, but I'm realizing very quickly that as I praise you, you're the one who enabled me to praise you. And the thought that you have enabled me to praise you is also from you. And you keep going back and back and back. I can't really do anything on my own accord. So when we humble ourselves and we say to Allah, Taqabbal, Ya Allah, I know I've done a lot in my sight, but it's very short in your sight. As we learn from one hadith, an individual who spent years and decades in the worship of Allah, he will be brought before Allah and he will say, Ya Allah, I'm deserving of your Jannah because of my ibadah. And Allah will say to this person, because of your ibadah? Because of your ibadah? And he will say, yes Allah, I did ibadah for dozens of years. It's for you. And I deserve Jannah. And Allah will say, drag this person to Jahannam. Why? Because all of the good deeds that you've done won't even account for your ability to see. The, your ability to see, your a'mal, where do you think? Do you think you created your own hands? Do you think you created your own sight? Your ability, your faculty of thinking, your cognitive abilities, where did you get this? The inspiration to do good? You're doing good and you will be admitted into Jannah because of Allah's mercy. And that's something we should be aware of. So, summary of part one, we are all weak human beings and we acknowledge that but Allah is perfect. And from His perfection is, He will take our weak deeds and accept them as though they are perfect if we ask Him. That's the first part. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ minna. So now, once we've made due plans to have our a'mal protected, we move forward. And we think to ourselves, what can we do now to have a productive post-Ramadan? The first thing, and I give this analogy very often, and it's for myself, is whenever we travel, 
you know, you're going to France or you're going to Europe or you're going to Turkey or you're going to Malaysia, wherever you're going, you're going to pick up a souvenir. You're going to pick up a magnet. You're going to take some pictures. And then when you come home, you put it on your fridge. So somebody comes and visits your home and they'll see your fridge and they'll see, wow, you've been to Paris? Oh, wow, you went to Germany? You went to Turkey? You went to Istanbul? You went to Malaysia? You travel very far and wide. You call those souvenirs as memories. In Ramadan, we need to take small souvenirs. Every Ramadan... We don't want to be the same version of ourselves in the previous Ramadan, right? Like, let's say, for instance, somebody goes to France and he gets, a, I've been to the Eiffel Tower. Then he goes to Istanbul and then he finds the same thing. I've been to the Eiffel Tower. He goes to Malaysia. He gets the same thing with a cup saying, I've been to the... He's been to so many places, but the souvenir he's getting is exactly the same. When we're going through Ramadan, whether it's 2010, 2011, 2013, I'm still stuck on the exact same goal. I'm going to learn what Surah Fatiha means. 2010. 2011, I'm going to learn what Surah Fatiha means. 2012, I'm going to learn what Surah Fatiha means. 2023, you know what? I'm going to learn what Bismillah means. I'm going backward. We need new souvenirs. We need to bring and take something with us as we move. That's the only way we can be productive. So, this Ramadan, last Ramadan, what made it different? Just to give you a thought experiment. Usually, I don't pray Qiyamul Layl at night. But this time after Ramadan, I'm going to pray two rak'at before I sleep. Asleep. That's my 2023 souvenir. Then 2024 comes, I'm going to learn the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. 2025, I'm going to improve my recitation of the Qur'an. And that way, it's not like a stagnant, circular motion. It's something new that I am doing. We need to learn to improve. Stagnation and complacency is so easy as a human being. But as we know with water, stagnant water becomes dirty very quickly. We get very comfortable with ourselves. We get very comfortable. I'll be comfortable thinking to myself, MashaAllah, I'm coming to the masjid. MashaAllah, I'm giving my zakah. Alhamdulillah, I'm reading Quran every once in a while. But if I analyze my life today and I compare it to myself 20 years ago, what have I done to improve? That's the famous statement of uh, Muhammad Ali, the famous boxer. He would say, a person who is the same 20 years ago as he is today, he wasted 20 years of his life. Yes, inshallah, Allah will accept our a'mal and our deeds and everything we do, but we should always aim to be the best version of ourselves. Ihsan, ihsan. An Allah ka'annaka tara. So there's a lot that can be discussed and a lot that can be said. But in summary, as the month of Ramadan, so beautiful, so amazing, so filled with blessings, subhanAllah, you know, the Salaf, some of them, they used to cry when Ramadan would end. And you would think, subhanAllah, Eid is coming. While everybody's enjoying and having a fun time and partying and getting ready for Eid, some people would cry literally because they realize that that moment of your heart being soft is gone. Everybody can attest to this. Standing up for Qiyamul Layl and Taraweeh, you don't even understand what the Imam is saying, but tears are rolling down your eyes. You're making dua, but you feel very different. When you're sharing and helping, you feel like you're contributing. After Ramadan, everything feels so burdensome. So Ramadan was a very beautiful time. But let it not just go by where we're just paying lip service to it. Two things. Number one, we pray to Allah that He accepts it from us. And number two, we pray to Allah to give us the inspiration to move forward and be the best version of ourselves. To be the best version of ourselves. And that should be what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In summary, Ramadan was a beautiful time. But we're not people who just get lost in the past. We don't just reminisce over the past and say, MashaAllah, Ramadan was good. No, we have to worry about the here and now. What's my next move? What's my next week? What's my next month? The six days of Shawwal. Did I start yet? It's already been a few days. This time last week was Eid. It's been an entire week. Did I start my six days of Shawwal? If I didn't, I have three weeks left and let me get into that habit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who do not be who are not deprived of the blessings of Ramadan and have their deeds accepted and are able to move forward and improve ourselves 
with the best version of who we can be. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin. Fastaghfiru faya fawza al-mustaghfirin. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وأتباعه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم آمين يا رب العالمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين قال الله تبارك وتعالى فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا معشر المسلمين أقيموا الصلاة وسووا سفوفكم